Uh, we are the largest bank in PNG in the South Pacific. Our market cap is US $1.3 billion. We're the only bank that offers the full suite of banking services to customers. Most of our competitors cherry pick certain lines of business. Uh, we are the only bank that provides the full suite of solutions to corporate uh, high net worth and retail customers. Uh, our operations uh, span obviously PNG but also Fiji, Solomon Islands and recently our acquisition from Westpac uh, of businesses in the Cook Islands, Tonga and Samoa. Uh, down the bottom there you can see the uh, grid which shows branches, sub-branches, agents, ATMs and FPOSs. So we are very broad based. Uh, we provide solutions across the South Pacific and uh, we are the bank of choice for anyone wishing to do business in the South Pacific uh, and indeed in PNG. Those of you that aren't familiar with our BSP, uh, our, we are very profitable. Our group profit after tax has continued to grow. That is a full year number to the end of 2014. Uh, our assets have continued to steadily grow, 15.88 uh, billion kina uh, as at December 2014. Uh, our capital management, our capital base is in very, very good shape and our adequacy ratios are well above what is required of us as a bank. Um, return on equity uh, as well as our uh, earnings per share uh, continues to increase and you'll see there that uh, very healthy metrics indeed, uh, metrics to die for even in first world uh, economies. So BSP Capital, as I said, is a wholly owned subsidiary of BSP. We are uh, operating in a number of key areas. Despite what you may read by others, we represent 60% market share in stockbroking. That is uh, inbound investment from offshore as well as domestic purchases uh, of uh, Port Moresby Stock Exchange listed securities. We provide nominee and custody services to domestic and foreign uh, institutions and investors. Uh, we are the third largest funds manager in the country. Uh, we've had rapid growth over the last uh, two and a half years. We currently have 1.3 billion kina of assets under management. And our corporate advisory business uh, spans a uh, specific suite, uh, capital raising, asset sales, valuations, advisory and acquisitions. And I've just put two small little tombstones there, uh, not well known, but uh, we were co-advisor with BNP Paribas on uh, Interoil's asset sale of their midstream and downstream assets that was completed in June of last year that was valued at 525 million US dollars. And we were the original uh, advisor to IPBC uh, doing due diligence on the five year redeemable bond uh, being contemplated by uh, IPBC being bought back from IPIC in Abu Dhabi. And the value of that was 1.7 billion. So we had exhaustive work there in terms of valuation and due diligence. So that's the sort of work that we do. PNG, uh, the GDP growth has slowed down mainly due to the fall in energy prices, it remains strong. You know, to have GDP growth of over 11% uh, is a GDP number to die for. Uh, everyone in Europe uh, will agree with that. Um, government revenues are weaker only in the short term, we believe. They are expected to rebound in the medium term. Uh, business confidence remains reasonable to good. And uh, you've seen the quality and the calibre of people earlier today talking about the tight management of the economy and the finances of PNG, which can only give you confidence. The second LNG project has, was recently launched. Uh, the preceding session had a number of the participants of that project here talking about that, and Total Interoil and Oil Search are the partners. First gas is expected in 2021, and if you are playing the medium and long game, then the gap between supply and demand will be exactly, perf it'll be the perfect storm in the positive rather than the negative when that comes on stream and when there'll be a uh, need for new gas in the market. What isn't talked about is the fact that around PNG, uh, Indonesia, Brunei, Malaysia have uh, supplies in, uh, in uh, decline. Uh, Australian LNG gas is spoken for as it's been pre-sold. So where will the new gas come from? And that's a perfect entree for PNG. So if you are playing the long game, PNG is a destination of choice for investment dollars. In terms of the South Pacific, just to give you some colour when I move around the market, uh, all Pacific Islands are expected to see positive GDP growth uh, this year and next year, except for Vanuatu and the Cook Islands. 
PNG is clearly the leader with its economic growth and the proceeds that it's getting from LNG and likely to get from LNG. Uh, Fiji's growth is broad-based, agriculture and tourism leads with a 4.3% expected this year. Solomon Islands was affected by floods recently but still expected to post a positive 3% GDP growth. Tonga's in reconstruction phase, care of a visit by Cyclone Ian. It'll grow at 2.3% this year. Samoa will be around 2% due to some spending around a conference, so infrastructure spending and reconstruction following also a visit by Cyclone Evan not so long ago. What I want to talk about is the chart just below. When you look at the developing Pacific uh, nations, third one down, it's a very compelling story if you are playing the medium term and long term game to compare and contrast the GDP growth from the developing Pacific with the rest of the world. The only thing that compares is developing Asia. Developing Asia has got disproportionate attention and disproportionate investment dollars relative to PNG and the Pacific. External views. The external views that I'm seeing, and some of you that do travel uh, abroad and uh, get these views as well, PNG in the wider South Pacific is poorly understood outside this region. What do I mean by that? I think people read the press and the press is all negative. They talk about Manus Island, they talk about crime, corruption, and it stops there. The view of the region uh, needs to change and that external view, as I say again, is poorly understood outside of the region. I think the entrenched perceptions and the historic low levels of engagement are now being addressed. There are a number of initiatives, government to government as well as business that are addressing it, but don't assume for one moment that it's already there now. There's a lot of work to be done to deal with these entrenched perceptions. Uh, the recent LNG project led by Exxon has, de has demonstrated that you can deliver a world-class product uh, on a massive scale, on time and on budget. PNG and the region is seen as high risk. It's been avoided by the mainstream. It's about tapping into that mainstream that is really the key. Uh, there is appetite for emerging and frontier markets. That photo below uh, is not from my holidays, but it is from a conference in New York in February. It was an emerging markets investment conference run by Orbach Grayson, who's partially owned by Morgan Stanley. And the 17 one-on-one -on -one meetings that I had with fund managers all have said to me in their own way the following key points. Number one, why haven't we heard this story before? Number two, uh, how can we get uh, there and invest there? You know, they are interested in this part of the world. We've just got to carry that story there and there's a wall of capital permanently allocated to frontier markets. And if countries like Sierra Leone, Kazakhstan, Iraq, Vietnam can get capital, why can't PNG in the South Pacific? It absolutely can. The opportunities ahead. I believe, and that's really the topic here uh, that I'm presenting, that PNG can be a hub for the wider South Pacific. It's already being pursued by us at BSP. Others such as Puma Energy see it as a hub and they're, bu they're building infrastructure uh, to that end. Equally, Air New Guinea clearly is, uh, PNG is its home and it is a hub for the wider region. I believe and business uh, evidence proves that you can see, look at PNG and Port Moresby in particular as a hub for the wider South Pacific. Though I say in the third point there, your business model that you, that you apply can't be a lift out out of Australia, New Zealand, Singapore or elsewhere and applied into this region. It's got to be relevant. It's got to be relevant and you've got to do, uh, have local content and you've got to understand what the problems are to deliver the business solutions in the region. I think clearly agriculture, fishing, tourism, resources and energy are going to remain the main industries. No surprises there whatsoever. But what's needed is capital, infrastructure, affordable and stable power supply. So those, those issues will remain constant and that's what's needed to drive business and business growth in the region. I think PNG is already beginning to lead the way. I'm not saying that because I live in PNG, but it's already happening in some areas. Uh, I referenced the, the success, the surprising success of the Pacific Games, how well it was run, uh, how it succeeded, how there were no issues and it surprised everybody. 
I think you've got enormous uh, volumes now of government-to-government -government contact, the recent Prime Minister of PNG going to India as a case in point, and the upcoming APEC summit. PNG can lead the way for the region, and it already, it already is. So the challenges right now um, to capitalise on these early successes that we have seen come from the region and from uh, PNG. Uh, never assume that the negative perceptions have gone away just because of a little bit of success. I think for anyone who is in this space needs to appreciate that this is going to be a constant uh, process. This will, this will be not a destination but a journey for us all. I think we need to consider strategic initiatives that are good for the region. What the region needs is more infrastructure. We need to raise capital from outside the region, not from within the region, and deploy it into, into the region. I think we need to encourage this inbound investment, uh, not from the usual suspects, but look further afield. And there is an opportunity to raise that money from further afield. We just need to tell that story. I think business, we in business and government, needs to manage the short-term issues. I think uh, the short-term issues tend to get too much bandwidth right now. And, uh, we should have this focus on the longer term.